The Dallas Cowboys have done it again. They've figured out a way to make every single Cowboys fans look like an idiot, and this time around, they also made me look pretty damn stupid. The Cowboys were my favorite to win the NFC, and well, they found a way to disappoint us all. They got absolutely obliterated by the Green Bay Packers with a final score of 48 to 32, but the final score does not give the actual game any justice. At one point, the Green Bay Packers led 27 to nothing, and if it wasn't for a 16 point outburst in the fourth quarter, the Cowboys would have lost with a score of 48 to 16. So there's a lot of questions that need to be answered in the Big D. Whether it's on the offensive side of things with Mike McCarthy or the defensive side of things with Dan Quinn, this Cowboys team is absolutely flawed and has to hit a little bit of a reset button. But what do I mean by the reset button? Well, I don't think you gotta get rid of guys like Dak, Micah, Trevon, CeeDee Lamb, and all them. You don't have to throw them all out and get a bunch of draft picks. There's no reason to hit the tank button either because there's no point in that you have so much talent already on the roster. What I mean by a reset is you have to figure out your coaching staff as well as a couple of small details on your roster. Let's begin with the offense and more importantly, Mike McCarthy. Because whether you like Big Mike or not, he has got to be gone because at the end of the day, this is three years in a row now where they have disappointed in the playoffs and this time around, it was even more embarrassing than usual. Because there's really no shame in losing to San Francisco. At the end of the day, San Francisco has so much talent. But when you're the Dallas Cowboys, going up against a first-year starter in Jordan Love, a bunch of first- and second-year starters in the receiving core, a pretty bad to mediocre offensive line, and one of the worst defenses led by one of the worst defensive coordinators in the entire NFL. And, to throw on the little cherry on the top, you're playing in Jerry's world where you guys are 16-0 in your last 16 home games. Yet despite every single advantage in the book, you lost, and not only did you lose, you were embarrassed. And I think I know why. For starters, Green Bay did a good job of forcing the offense to run through other players not named CeeDee Lamb. This Cowboys offense is 100% reliant on the productivity of Dak Prescott to CeeDee Lamb, and if there's no productivity between those two guys, the offense absolutely struggles. Tony Pollard's a good running back, but he definitely is not a lead back type of guy. He has to have somebody who can spell what he's weak at. A good example of what I mean by Tony Pollard is he's sort of similar to what the Green Bay Packers have with Aaron Jones and AJ Dylan. Aaron Jones is the better running back, but you get my point. Tony Parr needs a partner guy, a 1A, 1B option in the running game to help the offense out. But for Dallas, your 1A is Tony Pollard and your 1B is Rico Dowell. And well, Rico Dowell, as good as he's been this year, is nowhere near the level of a guy like an AJ Dillon or a Ezekiel Elliott even. And because they can't run the ball effectively, they have to basically force feed their only reliable weapon, and that's CeeDee Lamb and sometimes Brandon Cooks. And as good as Brandon Cooks is, he isn't really that number two receiver that we thought he would be this year. Not only is he kind of a weird fit with what Dallas wants to run, but he's also getting up there in age. So like I said, if the Dak Prescott to CeeDee Lamb connection isn't going properly, their offense is going to suck. And well, for whatever reason, the coaching staff decided that they didn't want to give the ball out to CeeDee Lamb in space. They wanted to run the ball way too many times over and over again in the first half. At one point in the first half, they ran 17 plays and 10 of them were run plays and 7 of them were pass plays. And I believe at that point, they were already down 14 to nothing, so it made no sense to continue to run the ball. And it's not like Tony Pollard had a bad game, it's just that they passed game for Dallas is so much better than the run game. Not to mention, the CD Lamb to Dak Prescott connection was just very off. Not only was the play calling off, but the connection between two very good players was just oddly off. And because of that, the offense sucked. And who's to blame? Well, I think you have to blame Mike McCarthy. At the end of the day, there was no designed screens for CD Lamb and Dak Prescott to get their connection going. And anytime they tried to run any sort of easy routes, it was super predictable routes like a quick curl, a quick outside route, or a quick slant, which obviously led to a pick six at one point in this game. Another thing that we have to talk about is the fact that, well, Dak Prescott was playing at an MVP level, but I think the way he was doing it was very impressive. It wasn't like he was playing within the system and being a quote-unquote system quarterback. He was doing a lot of his damage out of structure and making plays on his own. And well, that works out nicely against bad teams like the New York Giants or the Washington Commanders or the New England Patriots, but when you go up against teams like San Francisco, Buffalo, and apparently now Green Bay, those out-of-structure plays aren't necessarily going to be there. And so when your play caller isn't necessarily running the plays to help you get back within your structure, you're going to struggle as an offense because you don't don't have the pass connection going on with CD Lamb, you can't really run the ball effectively, your out of structure plays aren't working effectively because your in structure plays aren't working either, and not to mention, Dak Prescott had a horrible performance with two, almost three, boneheaded interceptions. So that's just the offense, let's now go on to the defensive side of things. And man, Dan Quinn again got cooked. This is a very flawed defense, the safety trio of Jaron Curse, Donovan Wilson, and Malik Hooker is kind of suspect. Jaron Curse was really bad this year in run fits, passing coverage, basically everything at times. And even though he actually played pretty good against Green Bay, I really don't think that Dallas should bring him back. He made so many bad plays this year. It was actually ridiculous. Donovan Wilson is sort of your big thumper guy. Think of him like a Cam 
Cam Chancellor wannabe, but like a 70 overall at Madden. And also, he's nowhere near the size of a Cam Chancellor, but you get my point. The play style is about the same. Their best safety this year was probably Malik Hooker, but even then, he's not really anything special, but I thought he did a good job of holding on to the back end of the defense. So your trio of safeties are very suspect. The next thing that's extremely suspect is your linebackers. For starters, you only have two really true linebackers that are currently active. You have Marquise Bell and you have Debone Clark. I believe your technical backup who would actually get meaningful playing time would be Micah Parsons because he did play linebacker in college. But when your linebacker depth is three guys, if even three, that's pretty sad. And as it is, Damone Clark is just very below average in terms of everything he does as a linebacker. For starters, he's extremely inconsistent. One game, he's going to have very good plays. Then the next game, he's going to be absolutely out of position basically every play. He's not very good in covering up the run. He's okay in pass coverage. He's just kind of mediocre. Again, there's plays here and there where he'll make a nice splash play, but overall, it's pretty inconsistent. And then there's Marquise Bell, who actually surprisingly had a pretty good season given the fact that he is a converted safety who is now playing at the linebacker position. He's undersized but has good speed and good coverage ability but for some reason in this game he was just completely off with his missed assignments and his reads. Not to mention he's pretty bad against the run because well he's a converted safety play linebacker. Of course the starter Leighton Vanderesh was supposed to be the guy but he's probably more than likely heading for retirement and the only other option you're going to have is DeMarvin Overshone who I'm pretty high on but he's very similar to Marquis Bell in the terms of he's not really a big downfield thumper. DeMarvin Overshone really thrives with his speed, his coverage ability because he was, I believe, a converted safety at Texas. So yeah, you're going to have a depth guy with DeMarvin Overshone or maybe a potential starter, but he's not necessarily the type of player you need in your linebacker's core. The next issue with this Dallas Cowboys defense is your interior defensive line. Mozzie Smith was maybe the worst first round pick we've seen from the Dallas Cowboys in quite some time. I mean, I can't think of one play that he did anything on. Then you have Jonathan Hankins and Oso Digazuba, and I think Jonathan Hankins is a very decent and capable run stuffer, but he has no pass rush moves at all. Whereas Oso is just all around a very good defensive tackle. He's not the special type like an Aaron Donald or anything, but he's definitely one of the better defensive linemen in the NFL. And then you pair all that up with a defensive coordinator whose scheme has become kind of figured out. People know how to beat a Dan Quinn defense. And in this game against Green Bay, the Dallas Cowboys defense was breaking tendency very often. For whatever reason, they decided to do less bump and run man tight coverage with safeties over the top to go more to a cover two, cover three zone look, which at times is a good idea and arguably against a first year starter isn't a bad idea idea to break tendencies, but it was the single fact that they just kept running these zone defenses, which ultimately led to so many big plays for Jordan Love to make. And for any Packers fans who are watching, I'm not taking away anything from Jordan Love and Aaron Jones and what they're able to do offensively. At the end of the day, they completely outclassed the Dallas Cowboys both offensively and defensively. But I think for the sake of the Cowboys, I think the Cowboys hurt themselves more than the Green Bay Packers really hurt them. Maybe I'm wrong and maybe it was a mixture of both, but I think Dallas just continues to just kept tripping over their own leg despite having way more talent at basically every single major position. So that now begs the question, if you're the Dallas Cowboys, what do you do moving forward? Well, I guarantee you that's going to be the question that every single Cowboys fan and every single person within that facility in Dallas is going to have to ask themselves. For starters, let's get this out of the way. Mike McCarthy, Dan Quinn, they gotta be gone. I like Dan Quinn as a defensive coordinator, but I think at this point, he's done enough with Dallas that it's become, again, like I said, figured out and it's kind of becoming stale. I think as it sits right now, they need a new voice in the defensive coordinator room who can go in there and not necessarily take away everything that Dan Quinn did, but add a little bit of their own personal flair to mix things up for this defense. And that same thing kind of applies to Mike McCarthy. I know it's weird to fire a guy who's had three straight 10 plus win regular seasons and has made the playoffs and actually won a playoff game last year. But when you've choked games away like this Green Bay Packers game and your last two San Francisco games, you should probably get moved on from. Had Dallas won this game, I think his job would be pretty safe, but the fact they got embarrassed on national television against, like I said earlier, Jordan Love, a bunch of basically rookies and second year guys in a very below average defense, changes are going to be coming. So who should actually replace Mike McCarthy? Well, I have three potential names, two of which have been talked about already, and one of which nobody's really been mentioning. For starters, the obvious one is Bill Belichick. Now, would Bill Belichick be a good fit next to Jerry Jones? I don't think so, but if they can figure out that marriage and let Bill Belichick run the team effectively without Jerry Jones necessarily getting in the way and pissing Bill Belichick off, then I think that would be a match made in heaven. A defensive mastermind who knows how to manage the clock, who knows how to win Super Bowls, is exactly what Dallas needs. My one concern with that hire would be who would take over 
over the reins as the offensive coordinator because these past couple years with Bill Belichick and his offense have obviously been pretty rough. So my concern would be that Dallas would actually go back to being one of the more below average offenses like they were under Jason Garrett all those years. If there's anything you can say about what Mike McCarthy's done this year, he's, he's done a good job of revolutionizing what this offense is. And I think moving forward, whoever takes over the reins as the offensive coordinator has to continue to stick with what Dallas was doing, but just add some flair to it with another option in that receiving room. So I would like Bill Belichick, but I think if they're going to get Bill Belichick, they have to keep somebody who knows the system of what Dallas is doing to ultimately run the offense. The next option would be Mike Vrabel, and for a lot of the same reasons as I said with Bill Belichick are the same reasons why I would take Mike Vrabel. As a player, he was obviously with the Patriots and knows exactly what the Bill Belichick system is like, and when he was the coach of Tennessee, that team was overperforming basically every single year up to about the past three seasons. Both of those coaches would have your team more prepared in the playoffs and would be a better fit for this team and what they need moving forward. The last name I'll throw out there is Bobby Slowick, who would bring in the San Francisco-like offense into an offense that's already kind of heading towards that direction, but they'd bring in a guy who has more experience with winning more games in San Francisco. He would be a rookie head coach, and I don't really know if I feel like this team necessarily needs a rookie head coach, but if they want to continue to go down the San Francisco route, then hey, Dallas gets Bobby Slowick, I would actually like that marriage. As for what they should do in the offseason, well, they have a ton of players who are going to be potentially gone. They're going to have 14 free agents with the biggest of them being Tyron Smith, Tony Pollard, Stephon Gilmore, Dorrance Armstrong, Jordan Lewis, and Jerron Curse. And of those names, I would only seriously consider bringing back guys like Tyron Smith, maybe Stephon Gilmore if he wants to be that cornerback three behind Deron Bland uh, and Trevon Diggs. I would also bring back Dorrance Armstrong as a continuous depth option for what this team likes to do, and as well as Jordan Lewis, who kind of fills out that slot corner position pretty nicely. I didn't mention his name, but I just saw it. But you also want to bring back Tyler Biotis, who's your starting center. He should be able to get a pretty cheap contract. And I think overall, he's a pretty solid center. Those are the guys you have to bring back. Now, you're going to have to pay some guys. CeeDee Lamb will get a massive contract. Dak Prescott will more than likely get a massive contract. And of course, guys like Tyler Smith, Deron Bland, and some of these other defensive players will also get paid. And I think in the draft, your first round pick has got to be a wide receiver. I think Keon Coleman would be a fantastic fit in this Dallas offense. I think with the rest of your draft, you just address positions of need with the best possible player available. Guys like Jeremiah Trotter or Edron Cooper could be names to look out there for in the second round. But before I put a ribbon on this present, let's actually talk about Dak Prescott and whether or not the Dallas Cowboys should move on. And Cowboys fans, let's face it, you're stuck with Dak Prescott. And I don't really know if that's necessarily a bad thing. At the end of the day, let's not forget, Dak Prescott was the MVP leader for about 50% of the season. And while Dak Prescott may not be that Super Bowl winning quarterback that can just carry his team over and over again, like a Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes, Matthew Stafford-like guy, I think at the bare minimum, he gives you your best chance. Because with all the quarterbacks that are going to be available this offseason, the only ones that are going to be potentially and more than likely better than Dak Prescott are Caleb Williams, maybe Drake. Drake May, and maybe if you're just really stretching the boundaries of how bad Dak is, maybe a Kirk Cousins. But Drake May and Caleb Williams would cost you at least four to five first round picks, just given where you're going to be drafting from. And well, Kirk Cousins arguably isn't better than Dak Prescott. At least I would say that Dak's better. So I think you have to make Dak Prescott work. At the end of the day, it's not like he just completely disappears in the playoffs, even though it kind of seems like he does. But like I said, you got to get somebody who knows how to work with Dak Prescott, especially when it comes to playoff time. The other bad part about the whole Dak Prescott situation is, well, you're going to pay him. You got to pay him at least $50 million because again, MVP candidate for 90% of the season. So yes, you're stuck with Dak Prescott, which is a bad thing, but it's also a good thing. It's a very weird marriage where it's like, Sure, Dak can win us 13 to 14 games a season, but what happens when we get to the playoffs? And I think that's when you get a guy like a Bill Belichick and Mike Vrabel to sort of ease your concerns about this team moving forward. So will the Dallas Cowboys win a Super Bowl next year? I'm starting to doubt it more and more every single season. Will they be my favorites next year? Absolutely not. I'm not doing that again to my Cowboys fans. But Cowboys fans, vent your frustration down below. But I love you guys. Peace.